right, let's get started. Uh, let me welcome you to our virtual celebration of the 2019-2020 College of Humanities and Sciences Faculty and Staff Awards. This event recognizes the excellence of faculty and staff contributions for the 19 the, for the 2019-2020 academic year, and as you probably know, would have typically been held in the spring. But like many other regularly scheduled events, um, we had to postpone until we were able um, to you know, regroup. So here we are, now we all know how to use Zoom well, and we are glad to be here. We congratulate all of the faculty and staff who were nominated and thank their colleagues for taking the time to submit such a competitive group of nominees. So we have a full program today, so I wanna get started introducing the honorees. The way we will um, progress today is someone from the Dean's office will introduce each award recipient, share a bit from their nomination and ask the awardee to unmute and accept their award and make their remarks. The first awards are new to the college, the Excellence in Inclusion, Diversity and Equity Awards. Here to present these awards is someone also new to the Dean's office, Dr. Faye Belgrave. Good morning. I, I am uh, delighted that our college is now honoring and recognizing individuals and organizations that have made exceptional contributions to equity, diversity, and inclusion. I also want to thank the college's uh, Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity Committee, IDEC, co-chaired by Charlene Crowley and Amy Rector for this committee's work and getting these awards established. Um, first, I'm very pleased to present the Committee for the Promotion of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, PREV in the Department of Psychology with the College of Humanities and Sciences IDEC Group Collaborative Award. As described in the nomination for this group, in fewer than five years, PREDEC has made an enormous positive impact on our department and on our community. PREDEC has worked to create a community of inclusion and our department through training and networking events for our staff, faculty, students, through formal and less formal activities. And as a <laughs> member of the psychology department, there are just so many activities that PREDEC has done. And I just wanted to give a couple they have hosted speakers on the topics of classroom experiences of faculty of color, hosted discussion forums on important topics such as ableism and the LGBTQIA plus community, several self-care events. I'm just really, really pleased to be able to present this award. Um, the first uh, recipient of ADEX Group Collaborative Award and here to um, accept this award is Fantasy Lozada, uh, professor, assistant professor in the Department of Psychology. Good morning. I'm so very excited to be among you today, albeit virtually, to accept this collaborative award um, on behalf of PREDI. I currently serve as the faculty chair for PREDI, and I can say that this award is truly a testament to the dedication and hard work that our committee members have invested in creating a more equitable environment in psychology. We'd like to thank our chair, Dr. Michael Southam Jarreau, for this nomination and his unwavering support of PREDI and his leadership in the department is a large contributor to our success as he serves as a role model in being responsive to the call of centering equity, diversity, and inclusion and in creating a better academic environment. We'd also like to thank the previous psychology department chair, Dr. Wendy Cleaver, who set us on this journey in the first place so that we could be a more connected and inclusive department. We'd also like to thank the many previous members of PREDI whose work was foundational in the creation of the framework that which we operate. And we thank you for your vision for what psychology could look like and it's on your shoulders that we stand as we move forward. We'd like to thank the faculty, staff, and students of the psychology department who show support for PREDI, showing up to our events, engaging in tough conversations and providing us feedback. Your engagement will be what supports sustainable change. But most of all, we'd like to thank our partners in this work, the graduate students who serve on PREDI. Our graduate students come into their respective programs looking to be the change that they want to see in the world and it motivates them to hold psychology to a high standard for providing training and coursework that reflects the current and historical context of the communities that we serve in Richmond. 
Credi was formed as a direct result of a call to action by graduate students in psychology who wanted better dialogue and engagement with issues of race, gender, sexuality, and intersectionality. Our students' fearless leadership speaks truth to power in Credi, and they remain our inspiration. Uh, the African philosopher J.S. Mbiti described the philosophy of Ubuntu as this belief, I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. And Predi is the committee that it is because of who our students are, but especially because of who we are all together, students, staff, and faculty working together toward a common good for one another. So thank you for this honor. Thank you, Fantasy. I, I can't think of any other organization so deserving of this award. I, I may be a little bit proud because this is my home department. Oh, I'm very proud. This is my home department. Next, uh, I am pleased to present Jerron Scott with the College of Humanities and Sciences, Inclusion, Diversity and Equity Commitment Staff Leadership Award. As advisor for the Department of Biology, Jerron Scott is described by his nominator as taking a multi-level approach to enacting change and promoting diversity and inclusion. He supports students as an advisor, through mentorship and advocacy, and he seeks to bring his experiences with implicit bias and training in device and techniques to both the VCU community and to the larger community of academic advisors, locally, regionally, and nationally. Jerron, on behalf of the department and entire college, congratulations on this recognition. Join me in applauding Jerron Scott as the 2019 20th recipient of ADAC Staff Leadership Award. Jerron. Is Jerron here? Okay. Is Jerron here on the uh, panel? I can't see. He said, I am here. Are you able to talk? I think he's in the attendees channel. Okay. Is there a way to unmute him so that he can accept the award? I think we might need to um, send him the link to log in as a panelist, and then we can um, maybe let him say some words once he's logged in. Okay, all right. Are you here? All right, awesome. You can hear me now? Yes, thank you. Perfect. So, um, just thank you for nominating me for the award. I'm very grateful. My uh, my grandmother was probably one of my biggest influences. And as a kid, she just always taught me to be kind to everyone that I meet. And with that, I just always took that going forward to just learn about people who are different from me. And so I can share myself with them. Then just always, always just having others in mind and having a heart of service. So this award really means a lot to me just being recognized for having a heart of service and, and willing to put myself in a position to serve others. And I would like to thank the biology department, the biology advising team, College of Communities and Sciences, so many UAB, so many ind individuals, Nakata, they all helped me be in this position to find success. And I'm just extremely thankful to be acknowledged for that. And I look forward to just serving the university and the college specifically more and in more roles and helping us grow and to truly be that college that we say we want to be to be one that that puts our students first no matter what type of student they are uh, growing up i became an amputee so that kind of put me in a position to where i was able to think more about how i relate to the world and how people view me not even just from a racial lens but from a physical lens from a mental lens from a from an able-bodied lens and just take those things with me and just move forward and help others and 
just grow. And just thank you all for this award and I greatly appreciate it. Ron, thank you so much for your heart of leadership uh, within the Department of Biology and the college. Next, uh, I am pleased to present Clarence Thomas with the College of Humanities and Sciences, Inclusion, Diversity and Equity Commitment Trailblazer Award. As Associate Professor in the Robertson School of Media and Culture, Clarence Thomas was described by his nominator as having a sustained record of contribution to teaching and service of racial and ethnic minorities in journalism and mass communication over the last three decades. His initiatives have ensured that the Robertson School and VCU have become more diverse and inclusive places to work and learn. Clarence, we are so pleased and proud to celebrate and recognize your dedication to diversity and inclusion. Please join me in applauding Clarence Thomas as the 2019-20 recipient of ADEC Trailblazer Award. Clarence. Let's see, I wonder if the same thing happened. Is Clarence available? I know he's here, I've seen him. What about now? Okay, thank you. Very good. I would like to thank God and I would like to thank those who nominated me. And I would like for you to know that my roots at VCU are very deep. My mother attended here as a graduate of the St. Philip School of Nursing many, many years ago. I've had other family members go here, including one of my daughters. And my wife and I have taught here and worked here for the past 30 years. In terms of diversity, I want us to all remember that diversity is a natural state in the world. God made the world as a very diverse place. However, inclusion and equity are not. And so as VCU becomes more and more diverse, I urge VCU to also work very hard at being more inclusive and more equal. Uh, in addition, with things like uh, the social unrest that is going on today, I want each of us to take a look at ourselves independently and make sure that we are addressing things like diversity, inclusion, and equity in our own individual lives. In other words, look around at the people who are right next to you. You might not be able to solve a national problem as an individual, but you definitely can look at the people in your immediate environment and try to work with them and make the world a better place. In closing, what I would like to quote is the name of a very old song that I was taught as a child. And the song basically says, brighten the corner where you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clarence, for your uh, long service uh, in inclusion and equity uh, here at VCU. So uh, we next present the Rise and Star in Diversity and Equity Award to a doctoral student in the Department of Psychology, Amanda Pox. Her nominator wrote that everything Amanda does is rooted in promoting diversity, inclusion, and equity from her class contributions, her research questions, clinical work, and her service. She embodies the spirit of this award. Her service contributions in this area are especially commendable given her doctoral workload. Please join me in congratulating Amanda for her outstanding contributions in the area of diversity and equity. Amanda. Good morning, everyone. I'm truly humbled and honored to be awarded with the Rising Star in Inclusion, Diversity and Equity Award for 2020. I wanna lead with a South African proverb I've come to live by, Ubuntu, which means I am because you are, or as Archbishop Desmond Tutu famously described to mean, my humanity is caught up, is inextricably bound up in what is yours. Thus, I'm here today receiving this award because of my community. I started at VCU in August, 2016, a few short months before the 2016 election. It's safe to say that most graduate students and people 
especially those from marginalized backgrounds, have been struggling to feel valued ever since. Given this, I want to express gratitude to my community because without them, I will not have the ability nor the energy to continue to fight for social justice both within and outside of ECU. I specifically want to recognize and give thanks to Dr. Heather Jones, my mentor and advisor, who has supported me since I interviewed with her in February 2016, and to my lab. To Dr. Rosalie Corona, the DCT of the Clinical Psychology Program, an ally and fellow awardee. To Dr. Zewe Serpel, the Director of Graduate Studies in Psychology, who helped to nominate me on behalf of my department. To my family, I miss you. To my close friends in the program who I work with frequently, Kiana Allen, Irene Jacobs, Stephanie Romo, and Melissa Avila, and to all my other friends, colleagues, and faculty in the Clinical Psychology Diversity Committee, the PREDI Committee, IDEC, and particularly in Black, which stands for Building Legacies Around Cultural Knowledge. In reaction to our frustration and hopelessness, in 2016, Black was founded by Kiana and co-led by a group of Black and Brown psychology students, including myself. I will never forget how nourished I felt on Thursday nights in Blackwell Community Center after our discussions about mental health and wellness, surrounded by friends and community partners who became family. There, I learned the true meaning of inclusion and equity, and I will forever be grateful to Black for protecting my hope. I want to ensure I thank the College of Humanities and Sciences, IDEC, and the faculty and staff who were instrumental in creating this award. To close, it is important we acknowledge the brutal injustices that are occurring both at home and abroad. With that being said, I want to bring awareness to the people in Nigeria, particularly the Oyibu people, and to all the protesters who are demanding an end to the special anti-robbery squad, SARS. We stand with you in solidarity. Thank you all again for this great honor. Thank you, Amanda. Finally, we present the second Rising Star in Diversity and Equity Award to a Rising Senior Biology major, Rebecca Alumu. Rebecca has focused much effort on community service to underserved populations, including being a camp counselor uh, for children of parents diagnosed with cancer, the Autism Society, Health Brigades, RVA Pride, among many other organizations. She was selected for this award because she is an outstanding student with a heart for giving back to her community. She has an impressive academic record and equally impressive record of service that has been highly focused on underserved populations. Please join me in recognizing Rebecca for her excellent service in the area of diversity and equity. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am extremely grateful and honored to be recognized along with these other amazing staff and students. And um, I just wanna thank the College of Humanities and Science and especially thank Mr. Jerron Scott who nominated me for this award. He's been um, an amazing advisor and mentor for me these past couple of years. And um, just like you mentioned, all these without all these organizations, I wouldn't be able to do any of the work that I do so I especially want to thank um, Camp Kesem, who uh, this organization I've been in since my freshman year, um, starting as a counselor to now director. And um, without each, I've seen throughout the years at every level, um, how much of the teamwork is emphasized. It's uh, with all the student leaders that work together. And um, I also want to say that diversity, equity, and inclusion are more than just words to me. They're how I want to live my life and need to be at the forefront of everything that we do. And um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone that have helped me along this journey and my family and God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca. Danielle Harrison, the College of Humanities and Sciences Director of Human Resources will introduce the next awards and honorees. Danielle. Thank you, Faye. Good morning, everyone. The next awards recognize the extraordinary efforts and contributions of staff in the College of Humanities and Sciences. First, I am pleased to present Pamela Williams with the College of Humanities and Sciences Excellence in Administration and Office Support. As Executive Assistant for the Robertson School of Media and Culture, Pamela Williams does it all with a plume. Her nominator writes, 
Pam has fulfilled her role in the school faithfully, precisely, and with positive impact. Her extremely strong loyalty and dedication to the Robertson School, the College of Humanities and Sciences, and VCU are demonstrated in her positive attitude, genuine care, and proactive participation in various initiatives and activities of the school, college, and university. Pam, on behalf of the Robertson School and the college, thank you for all that you do. Join me in applauding Pamela Williams as a 2019-2020 recipient of the Excellence in Administration and Office Support. Good morning, everyone. being chosen as this year's recipient of the Excellence in Administration and Office Support Award. This is truly an honor and uh, I'm grateful for that. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Marcus Messner and the Robertson School Awards uh, Committee for counting it not robbery to nominate me for such an award. I would also like to thank uh, the College of Humanities and Sciences uh, Awards uh, Selection Committee for choosing me uh, as this year's recipient. And that being the case, I would also like to congratulate uh, my other colleagues that were nominated with me. Um, I take pride in the work that I do. And I even have the nickname in, our, in my department as uh, Get Her Done. Um, I take pride in what I do because I feel that the work that I do in this position as executive assistant, not only is it a reflection of myself, but it is a reflection of the unit that I serve and also of the college and also as VCU. And uh, I would also like to take this time to thank my Robertson School colleagues uh, who have mentored me over the years, who encouraged me, uh, those who work alongside me. Uh, we laugh together, we cry together, we plan together, we work together, we eat together, um, we learn together and we grow together. And the key word in all of this is together because we are a team. So thank you, Robertson School. Go Robertson. I would also like to thank um, my colleagues um, beyond the Robertson School, uh, my colleagues in the Co in College of the Managers and Sciences for being a great source, uh, resource of information and knowledge over the years. Um, there are at least lots of people that I can reach out to if I have a question, if I have a hang up about something, or if I need uh, some knowledge about something, the college has a great resource of people. So I would like to thank you all for all the emails, um, the inquiries that you've helped me with, whether they were by telephone or by email, for pointing me in the right direction, uh, for encouraging me, for helping me to learn something new. I would like to take the time out to thank my colleagues as well. And also um, just want to thank all of you who took the time out to um, help celebrate us on today. It is truly, again, an honor to accept this award, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. Next, I am pleased to present Stephanie Hart with the College of Humanities and Sciences Excellence in Fiscal Administration. As Service Center Director of Operations for the Department of Psychology, Stephanie Hart demonstrates leadership as, as described by her nominator in these ways she is the kind of person who identifies the obstacle, makes clear the relevant regulations and guidelines, and then helps the person identify possible solutions that allow them to move forward towards success, whether that be students moving toward their degrees or faculty moving toward grant awards. Congratulations, Stephanie. Thank you for your work in the department. Join me in applauding Stephanie Hart as a 2019-2020 recipient of and fiscal administration. Thank you, Danielle. I'm really honored to accept this award and want to thank uh, the department and the College of Humanities and Sciences. I was really surprised to win this award, so it's kind of nice in this telecommuting uh, environment to see friends and colleagues. Um, I miss everyone and being on campus. Um, as the Service Center Director in the Department of Psychology, I have to acknowledge the amazing team of people that helps me uh, run this big department in the Service Center. Um, and I want to call them out each, each by name. Um, I couldn't do my job without this amazing team of people, so I'm going to give a shout out to Christian Payne, Peter Stauffer, Joanne Biggs. 
Lisa Gagliano, Corey Martin, Amanda Sylvester, Daniel Terrell, and In Huang, who has recently left us. As you know, if you're in the Department of Psychology, we're a big team of people and we learn from each other and we support each other. Um, it's really important. Um, having been at VCU since 2003, I'd like to acknowledge that being in the College of Humanities and Sciences has given me growth opportunities that I never imagined. And recently I've been able to um, serve in service areas outside of fiscal, which has been really exciting. Um, and I just really wanna thank the Department of Psychology and CHS for the nomination and the award. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations again, Stephanie, thank you. Next, I am pleased to present Roy Roach with the College of Humanities and Sciences, Excellent in Humanities and Social Sciences Advising. As academic advisor for the Robertson School of Media and Culture, Roy Roach is described in his nomination as a person of great integrity who works hard to build meaningful relationships with his students and continues to work to promote diversity, inclusion, and equity on campus. Students in the Robertson School are very lucky indeed to work with him. Join me in applauding Roy Roach as a 2019-2020 recipient of Excellence in Humanities and Social Sciences Advising. Good morning, everyone. I first would like to thank everybody that was on the committee that nominated me for this amazing award. Thank you to everyone, Dr. Mesner and the awards committee. Um, and thank you to the College of Humanities and Sciences Selection Committee that um, saw it so that I was to be uh, accepted for this award. I'm, I am humbled and I am grateful to this opportunity. Um, I first would like to uh, thank um, my supervisor, Juliana Rasnick, who brought me in and really taught me everything that I needed to know. And most importantly, the student services um, a center where uh, Natasha Long, Susan Kramer, and Maggie McDermott really welcomed me in to really show me what um, the opportunity that the Robertson School provides for its students. I am very humbled and grateful that three years ago when I moved to VCU, I was ready to embark on the lives of other people and uh, younger students because at a certain point in time where the uh, attending higher education really changed the course of my life. And I knew that at some point, Point in time, I wanted to be able to do the same thing for others. And so most importantly, even after the staff and after departments, I really would like to thank the students that are part of this journey as well for welcoming me in and allowing me to be able to share the knowledge that I bring to them and allowing them to be able to make changes and make great impacts on our lives. So again, thank you for this opportunity and congratulations to everybody else on this committee and everybody else. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Congratulations again. At this time, I will turn it over to Dr. Ed Acevedo, who will introduce the next three staff honorees. Ed. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, and congratulations uh, to Roy uh, and all our other award winners, of course. Uh, it really is an honor for me to be recognizing our staff who provide such critical service uh, to the college, to our students, uh, to their colleagues, faculty, administration. It really is amazing. Uh, and we're just recognizing a few today. Now it's my pleasure to present to you John Hutton, our College of Humanities and Sciences Excellence in Multi-Unit Support Award winner. As Graduate Programs and Special Projects Coordinator for the Dean's Office of the College of Humanities and Sciences, John Hutton is a steadfast administrator working on behalf of our graduate programs. As described in his nomination, John's role is a mission critical time sensitive job that involves critical decision-making with respect to adhering to VCU policies and procedures and the review process for awarding graduate degrees that span the full spectrum from certificates, master's degrees, including the Masters of Fine Arts and doctoral programs. John, thank you for your work and dedication to our students. They're better for it. Please join me in applauding John Hutton as the 2019-20 recipient of the Excellence in Multi-Unit Support Award. Thank you, Ed. Hello, everyone. Thank you for recognizing me for this award. I'm honored and humbled as there are many talented and dedicated staff who deserve recognition, particularly those who have been here longer than I have. A special thank you to my boss, well, bosses, 
Josh Schlangberg and Ed Acevedo for nominating me for their leadership and continued support. Also, thank you to Dean Mallett, Daniel Harrison, and everyone involved in the award uh, selection process. Although I provide graduate affairs support and coordination between the Dean's office, the graduate school and records and registration, it's really a team effort of 15 to 20 graduate program directors and department support staff. Josh and Ed as my mentors and Patsy uh, Connors and Vicki Bird in finance and HR. They do all the work. I just facilitate the process, the um, maestro for, for an orchestra, if you will. A project that exemplifies uh, this team effort this past year was the planning and implementation of the postdoctoral candidacy research course. We began planning in spring 2019, spearheaded by Ed and Sterling Daniel, with Patsy and I providing student program and su support funding information. As the planning continued through fall 2019, gathering information from the doctoral program directors to gaining the approvals of the college's graduate academic committee, the university graduate council, and the board of visitors to offering six sections of Hume 701 in spring 2020, and they continue the opus of our coordinated efforts. Thank you again for this award. I'm truly honored and humbled. Thank you, John. You've been a critical role player and a critical individual in accomplishing so much for our graduate programs. Congratulations. Thank you. I am now pleased to present John Arnold with the College of Humanities and Sciences Excellence in Research and Lab Administration Award. As a building manager for the Department of Chemistry, John Arnold is described by his nominator as possessing a deep commitment to furthering and strengthening the department through service. He's an example and an inspiration to his peers. John, thank you for your work for the Department of Chemistry. We are pleased to recognize your dedication. Join me in applauding John Arnold as the 2019-20 recipient of the Excellence in Research and Lab Administration Award. All right, uh, well, thank you so much. I feel very honored uh, for this. Um, chemistry is uh, very much like a family to me. Uh, you know, I couldn't do it without uh, the help of a bunch of people. Uh, Dr. Turner, who's uh, tormenting me right now by having me projected on a 60 inch screen in the, uh, in the uh, laboratory. Uh, Mike Morris also, uh, thank you very much for helping me. Um, we are, the three of us work great as a team. Uh, we also include uh, Bria Milla, uh, Dr. Mike Honeycutt, uh, Dr. El Shell for letting me uh, do my job um, and uh, letting me, uh, you know, take care of things without uh, interfering with the process. Um, again, just thank you very much. I'm very honored to have this award. Thank you, John, and congratulations once again. Next, I'm pleased to recognize the work of Alvin Bryant with the College of Humanities and Sciences Excellence in Advising in Science Award. As the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Advising for the Department of Biology, Alvin Bryant, as described by his nominator, fully represents the pinnacle of what it means to be a caring, fully engaged, and proactive advisor with the goal of helping students to identify explore and to reach their individual career and personal goals through innovative, holistic, and inclusive advising. His leadership has provided new avenues to serve a more diver diverse student population, including through sharing and improving approaches and strategies with fellow advisors and others leading advising teams. Alvin, Again, thank you for your work with students in biology. We appreciate your thoughtful work. Join me in applauding Alvin Bryant as the 2019-20 recipient of the Excellence in Advising in Science Award.
Thanks so much, Ed. Um, first, I'd like to give honor to God for, for our God. I wouldn't be able to do the type of work that I do for uh, the university and also for the students. Um, to the uh, selection committee for the College of Humanities and Science, thank you so much for the Biology Advising Awards Committee, um, Bill Eggleston, Jonathan Moore, um, for nominating me for this um, wonderful award. Um, I'd like to thank my, uh, my department, the faculty and staff members who have uh, embraced me and um, have been uh, instrumental in helping me to do the work that I do. Um, to my advising team, um, Rachel Hill, Teron Scott, Hannah Petey, Emily Thompson, uh, Faith Cooper, um, and, and uh, past advisors that we've had in, in our unit. Um, they do great work and um, I'm so glad and proud to um, be a part of a, a team that, that cares, um, that's driven, um, and uh, that really wants to serve um, our biology community. Um, to the advising community, I definitely want to thank you for support. I've been able to uh, do a number of things with the advising community here at BCU, um, and I'm so grateful for the opportunities that have been afforded to me. Um, so as, a, as an advisor in the sciences, um, I, I do a lot of work with um, not just biology students, but all students that have attachments to, uh, the, to the STEM field. So faculty advisor for National Association of Black Engineers, work with Black men in medicine, um, the list kind of goes on. And so the, the main thing that I, I really pride myself on is trying to be my authentic self and then also keep the student first in whatever I do. And so um, I, I want to implore everyone else also as well to be your true self as you enter this world um, and as you interact with fellow students, uh, class, um, excuse me, staff and faculty members um, that we have to keep the student experience uh, first and foremost um, so that we can um, have a better place within this community. And uh, so but once again, thank you so much for this opportunity and um, I'm so grateful and humble. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. We greatly appreciate your work. Congratulations once again. Now, Dr. Josh Langberg will introduce to you the first three faculty members being recognized with awards. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Ed. Thank you everybody for taking the time to be here today. Um, this has just been amazing to, to listen and to hear the inspirational words. It's picked me up and made me ready to work more and work harder. So I thank you for, to everyone. I am pleased to present Jeff South with the College of Humanities and Sciences Distinguished Mentoring Award. As an Associate Professor Emeritus in the Robertson School of Media and Culture, Jeff South was described in his nomination as a tireless and intrepid mentor to budding journalism students. His nominator writes, he has always gone above and beyond his assigned teaching and service duties and spent hundreds of additional hours mentoring our students as editorial director of our Capital News Service, guiding them to win awards for their reporting, and then guiding them to gain jobs in newsrooms. Nobody in the Robertson School has been more dedicated to our journalism students or has worked harder every day to mentor and support them. Jeff, we want to thank you for everything you've done for VCU and for the Robertson School. Please join me in applauding Jeff South as the 2019 2020 recipient of the Distinguished Mentoring Award. Wow, thank you, Josh. Um, I want to thank the Robertson School for nominating me for this award and to thank all the students who put their trust in me over the years. It takes a village to mentor a student, to listen to students, offer advice about academics, careers, and life in general, and to provide letters of recommendation and other tangible support. It's a village of teaching faculty, research faculty, administrators, departmental academic advisors, and support staff. It's more than any one person. But I am honored to accept this award on behalf of all the dedicated mentors at VCU. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. 
Next, I am pleased to present Dr. Rose Corona with the College of Humanities and Sciences Distinguished Scholar Award. As a professor in the Department of Psychology, Dr. Corona is truly a role model and a mentor to many at VCU, and I count myself in that group. Her grant funded and community engaged scholarship focuses on health promotion and risk reduction, primarily among Latinx youth. Her letter of nomination notes that she is a nationally recognized scholar whose program of research focused on creating more equitable local and global communities for those who are traditionally underserved and on the development of a passionate and creative workforce that can address systemic barriers to mental health care is directly aligned with the college and VCU mission. Rose, we are proud to recognize your incredible record of scholarship at VCU and your dedication to the Richmond community. Thank you for representing the college so well. Please join me in applauding Rose Corona as the 2019-2020 recipient of the Distinguished Scholar Award. start by uh, thanking everybody who nominated and was a part of that nomination. I know the personnel committee and um, our chair and the department have a lot to do with that. So I'd like to thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna start with a little story. Um, being able to succeed as a scholar, I think is all about the fit of where you are at a university. I chose to come to VCU because of that fit. I grew up in the state of California after I interviewed here. My husband called me and asked how it went and I started to cry and said, it was awesome, but it's in Virginia. Um, how am I ever gonna leave my family and friends? But I took the leap and it's because of VCU's commitment to community engagement, diversity and inclusion. So I have been a community engaged scholar. Everything I do is intertwined with my teaching and my service. Some of the harder messages were always stop doing so much service. And I said, but I can't because it leads to my scholarship. So I don't know how to take one apart from the other. So I'm gonna start by thanking all the people who helped me get to where I am here at VCU. And I'm starting with my community partners, specifically the Sacred Heart Center um, and primarily um, Tanya Gonzalez. She started off in the city of Richmond multicultural office and um, ended at Sacred Heart, but we've been partnering since 2004. Um, I've also partnered with Crossover Clinic, so shout out to them, and also to my colleague, Dr. Mark Ryan at the Hazy Willis um, Medical Center. I am only here because of the students that I work with, and so big shout outs to all the undergraduate and the graduate students, the La Samilla, La Samilla Lab, and also my new colleagues in La Esperanza Lab as well. Um, it's been just such a pleasure to work and to, to be here with them. And, you know, it's not always easy to manage everything as a professor and a parent and a wife. So special shout outs to my book club ladies who help keep me sane in everything I do, going out to dinners with me. My husband who will always read my grant applications and provide me help with budgets. And also to um, my, my kids and my family. So thank you all. Thank you, Rose. And finally, I am honored to present Michael Southam Giro with the College of Humanities and Sciences Distinguished Service Award. And I'll start with a little context. As professor and chair of the Department of Psychology, Mike leads a unit with over 1,700 undergraduate majors, 52 faculty, and multiple large graduate programs. And that is comparable or larger than the size of many colleges and schools here at VCU. He is described in his nomination as providing extraordinary service to the Department of Psychology, college, university, community, and profession, and is displaying organization, wisdom, and sensitivity in all of his leadership roles. His record of service is truly exemplary. Prior to serving as chair, he served as graduate program director, and he has served as the associate editor for two of the top journals in his field, on many federal grant review panels and as the president of the primary organization that represents clinical child psychologists. Mike, thank you for your leadership and your truly remarkable record of service. 
please join me in applauding Michael Southam Giro as the 2019 2020 recipient of the Distinguished Service Award. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Uh, and thank you, everyone. This is so kind. As someone who has a pretty bad case of imposter syndrome, this is one of those things that's really hard to believe. And so you're just discounting everything you're hearing. Um, I feel really lucky to have a great team in psychology and in the college and at VCU. Um, I really want to thank our leadership team in psychology, Zewe Serpel, Linda Zizneski, Kevin Allison, Stephanie Hart, Lucy Hudson, and Latoya Davis. Um, they are my rock in the department and really helped me um, to do this really hard job of being chair. Um, this department is great because we have amazing faculty and staff and I, my job is so much easier because I basically just have to not screw things up and not get in the way and they will all do all the great work. Um, and I also want to thank we have the best students. I mean, the college has the best students, but in psych with psychology, we feel very proud of our 17 to 1800 undergraduate majors, about 500 minors, I think, and then our 130 graduate students. And so we're so, so grateful to be able to work with all of them. And then I want to also thank uh, patient and generous mentors. I'm not an easy person to mentor. Um, and so I've had many patient and generous mentors over the years, in particular, the previous chair of our department, um, Wendy Cleaver, was very helpful um, to me. But I've had many great mentors in the college and at VCU. Um, and this award really is for all the folks that I just mentioned. I really feel like I, if, if they're all the money that's supposedly backing up to all of our houses now, I'm gonna give away. Um, I wanna close just this by sharing the themes we have in our department this semester and really for this academic year, which is to be flexible with ourselves and with each other, to be compassionate to ourselves and with each other and to create a community of care. Um, so thank you so much. This is a, a great honor and um, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Now, uh, Dr. Sally Honeycutt will introduce the next three award recipients. Thank you, Josh. I just want to echo all the other members of the uh, Dean's office and saying how um, exciting it is to um, hear about people's stories and recognize our outstanding uh, staff, faculty, and students um, with these awards and honors. I wish we could do this more often and have awards for everyone. Um, I want to take just a, a little time to also um, acknowledge and thank the um, ad hoc committee of former award winners who I called on um, to very quickly review the many, many incredible applications. It's one of the hardest things to do is to, to pick the um, recipients of these awards because it's really exciting to see all the great uh, work that's being done um, for our students. Um, so with that, I'd like to um, start off by um, presenting Ryan K. Smith um, from, from the Department of History with the College of Humanities and Sciences, ELSCA VP Smith Distinguished Lecturer Award. Um, Professor Smith um, was described by his nominator as an interdisciplinary scholar who <clears throat> combines his training in history with interests in religious history, material culture, architectural history, historical archaeology, and public history to produce a truly innovative perspective of early American history. His third monograph, which is due to be published next month, uh, quote, examines how racism and the color line have consistently shaped death, burial, and remembrance in Richmond's burial landscape over the past 300 years. Uh, we are very excited and looking forward to hearing Dr. Smith's lecture later in the spring as he brings his research lens to help us understand uh, Richmond and the VCU community um, in our current time. Um, please uh, join me in uh, welcoming and recognizing uh, Ryan Smith as the recipient of the Elska VP Smith Distinguished Lecture Award. Well, hello everybody and thank you Sally so much for that. I'm so grateful for the award. It's been a really great bright spot uh, in the midst of a difficult time for us all, I know, and um, I've really appreciated, in addition to the inspirational stories that we've found here this morning, but also the notes of congratulation that I've been fortunate to receive from, from all over the college. Uh, of course, I'd like to thank my colleagues in the history department who have helped support and foster all of my work and who have 
put forward the, the nomination here, the personnel committee that worked so hard to put the, the nomination together. Uh, my department chair, John Powers, who uh, has done a lot to support my own work and then all of our fellow colleagues in the history department's scholarship. And so, of course, I feel like I share the award with all of them. I also recognize the, the role of the Humanities Research Center in supporting and fostering my scholarship too. I was fortunate to receive a, a residential fellowship. And so the fellows, the faculty that were with me helped really advance my thinking on a lot of these issues. Faida Tota, Winnie Chan, and Nicole Turner specifically. Um, and the other benefit of being a, a part of the Elsky Smith Lecturer Series is that I get to join so many fantastic and inspiring lecturers before me. The list is, is really um, daunting when you think about uh, stepping into that stream. And in that mindset, I would uh, remind us all that Robert Godwin Jones, the previous award winner, uh, because of the COVID situation, this way I understand it, was not able to present the uh, lecture as usual in the spring. And so I believe it's one week from today on October 30th that he will be presenting his Elsky Smith lecture on language learning and technology. And so I look forward to um, seeing his, his lecture next week and, and celebrating his work as well. And as Sally mentioned, um, I've been working on cemeteries and the dead and the role of the dead in today's landscape and the memorial landscape generally. So I anticipate that those are the themes I'll be touching on in my lecture uh, when, when that takes place in whatever format that takes place. So thanks to the Dean's office and everyone for their support. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, thank you also for uh, giving a shout out for the lecture, which is one week from today. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing from Dr. Godwin Jones. Um, next, I am so pleased to present Wesley Childress with the College of Humanities and Sciences Distinguished Adjunct Award. It's always wonderful when we can uh, recognize uh, those colleagues who work as adjunct instructors and really are doing it entirely for the love of their students and the love of their subject. And um, uh, that is definitely the case uh, with uh, Wes. Um, he has been an adjunct instructor in the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics for 45 years. Uh, his nominator wrote, writes, uh, in light of his over 45 years of service, Mr. Childress continually works to improve his teaching by learning and employing modern methods on his own time. Um, here, there are so many um, wonderful uh, student comments about someone who teaches the, you know, in the entry level math uh, program, which is, is certainly a challenging area. Um, one student comments included, quote, he really cares about his students. He's the kind of teacher that I wish I could teach every class I took. He inspired me to a more mathematical career and overall made me love my first semester at VCU. This is certainly high praise. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Wesley Childress as the 2019-2020 Distinguished Adjunct Award winner. Wow, Sally, that was quite nice. <laughs> um, almost leave me speechless. Um, obviously, I'm uh, pleased, honored, but most of all humbled uh, for this award. Being an adjunct instructor has meant a lot to me. Uh, in the early years, it was a source of income to help buy, a, supplement my buying a home. When I first bought a home, I just barely made the cutoff uh, uh, alone. I was a high school teacher, and I forgot to factor in uh, eating. So uh, I've, en I've enjoyed uh, being here at VCU with adjunct. Adjunct uh, has changed greatly over the course of the time that I've been here. Uh, it used to be the adjunct came in at seven o'clock at night. It kind of snuck in and snuck out. Uh, a lot of wonderful people that I uh, think about from that those days uh, meant a lot to me in getting me started. Uh, I checked my email before uh, coming in this morning to join you. Uh, on March the 6th, I got an email from uh, Ronnie Sadium. Um, Ronnie is a, a young teacher. Everybody's young to me, but young teacher who's uh, developed this um, 
uh, in service, math in service enrichment seminar, I guess is the way I would describe it. And, and I started going to them. I attend a lot of things here. That's one of the nice things about being adjunct. And especially if you have more than one class, you can fill it with uh, so much going on on this campus. Anyway, uh, these were delightful seminars. And I mean, I just learned so much and they were helpful in that we could actually got something out of them and it was like a lot of dialogue. So on March the 6th, I got an email from her and I fully expected it to tell me about the upcoming seminars. And I was flabbergasted uh, when it's opened. I would like to sit, submit your name for a distinguished adjunct uh, award. Needless to say, at that point I'd won because being recognized, uh, especially when we fly under the radar the way we do an adjunct was uh, something I did not expect. Um, and coming from someone who's so talented and I think, I hope uh, VCU recognizes the talent this young person brings in. Uh, I can only say having her nominate me, I could describe that as priceless. As Sally said, I've been here a long time, um, but I don't let that stand in my way. Uh, I've actually served under every one of the VCU presidents. Uh, that sounds better than giving you a number. I've I collected my ninth uh, 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 five-year award back in October of two seven, 2017. And the first course I taught here at VCU was a three-hour course, uh, $39 for the course. Uh, that's what the students pay. That was the tuition in those days. So times have changed. People always ask me, not here at VCU necessarily, but more just the people I know, why are you still working? <laughs> they look at me, you probably look at me, why am I still working? And I, I don't, my answer to them is uh, for the same reason I jog a little. I used to jog a lot, now I jog a little. I, when I see a penny on the ground, I bend over to pick it up. And I've gotten so for about the last 10 years, I park about a mile away from VCU and walk in and walk back out. And the reason I do each of those is the same reason I teach, continue to teach. I've been blessed because I still can. So many people can't. Uh, and uh, I believe in shoulda, woulda, coulda. Uh, I don't wanna look back and uh, say, I wish I had. I thoroughly enjoy this uh, work um, and I uh, um, learn something every time. I, I reinvent the wheel every, every, every year. Nothing, everybody thinks you just pull it out of a binder and, but it's not and it's changing more and more uh, than uh, uh, in, uh, as we go along. I should stop at this point and recognize certain individuals that have helped me make help make me a better teacher. But I, if you know me, you know it would be grieve me to no end to realize I left someone out. And when I started thinking back over these years, it just rolled like a tide of the number of people that I've known. So I would like to merely say I've stood on the shoulders of so many giants. And that's so true. Nevertheless, there's one person who shares with me this award. My other half, Bev Long, she's sitting here. She comes with me when I get a attendance of, um, yearly, uh, every five year award. She's very interested in, uh, in what I do and is, is unbelievable uh, helpmate and uh, support in what I do. Um, when I started teaching, it took me a few years to realize before I realized I liked teaching. And it took me three to five years of figuring that out. I think that's true for many of us. The rest of my years have been spent learning to love teaching. There was a professional baseball player that used to say he loved playing baseball. And he said, I can't believe I get paid to do what I would do for nothing. And I say, ditto. I'm going to close by sharing with you um, uh, an article I read in Poets and Writers. Writing is my real love in life. Math is the thing I seem to done better than uh, others, uh, other things that I do. Um, so, but I, I do keep a hand in, in writing poetry and dab in that and attend many of the uh, seminars I have in the English department. Uh, especially I enjoy movable feasts where the creative writing students uh, present their uh, thesis. So in reading an article on poets and writers, I, I read something last week that I thought was very appropriate to end with here. Um, 
there was a they were interviewing a writer who's uh, had written four books on the topic wonder, W-O-N-D-E-R, it's a wonder. And the interviewer, uh, in talking to the, the author, asked, if, could you tell me what wonder means to you? And I wanna share that with you. She said, wonder to me is when you get surprised by your own curiosity when confronted with something unfamiliar and unsuspected. And that sense of curiosity turns into a kind of joy and excitement. And that's what teaching is for me. I, every student who walks in, it's, you know, your car won't start. There are probably four or five things that need to be done that are keeping you from starting from the battery to the uh, starter to whatever. These students walk in and they're all a blank slate and they come in uh, when, when they can't do something, there could be a myriad of uh, reasons why they can't. And as you go through and try to work with that student, you become so, uh, your whole outlook changes and you're, you develop a feeling of excitement, hopefully. Not for everybody, but that happens, that aha moment. And I thought, I want to hold on to that uh, quote from that um, dialogue between the interviewer and, and the person being interviewed. I want to close by just saying thank each of you for being here and allowing me to share in this award with you. Thank you. Thank you again, Wes, for your many years of uh, dedication and service to um, our students and uh, to the VCU community. Uh, the third award I'm presenting um, is uh, a second award to a familiar uh, face from earlier in our program. Um, we again recognize Alvin Bryan, Bryant, sorry, this time with the College of Humanities and Sciences Distinguished Advising Award. Um, and um, here I'll just emphasize some other work that Alvin has been involved with, um, his role in particular in increasing transfer student success um, through the VCU NIH Bridges to the Baccalaureate Program, so in which he provides advising and programming support to participants and helps develop and manage the transition program for first year transfer students to reduce transfer shock. Uh, he has also uh, developed and leading, helping to lead departmental efforts as the College of Humanities and Sciences African, male, um, African American Male Initiative. Alvin, thank you again for all you do for the Department of Biology and for the College of Humanities and Sciences. Please join me in applauding Alvin as the 2019-2020 recipient of the Faculty Distinguished Advising Award. Thank you, Sally. Um, I'm trying to reflect on this, like, do I have more words to say? But you know, my mom and dad always said, always have make sure you have something to say. Um, uh, my wife uh, faults me on on being preachy, but you know, she's not here right now, so. If everyone, the congregation will please turn your book to 2 Corinthians. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop. Um, but I, I, once again, I'm, I'm humbled in and uh, greatly appreciative of uh, being bestowed this honor. Um, when I think about my, my journey uh, uh, to becoming an academic advisor, um, I, I reflect back to my, my journey as being a college student and um, the people that I came across, uh, the experiences that I had, um, I love being in college. And um, there, uh, I had to point out to um, my, my mentor, uh, um, uh, Joseph Lyons, uh, was my counselor at, at VCU when I was a student here. And uh, he was such an impactful um, individual in my life uh, that, that gave me, um, Help me, help give me direction and um, and perspective on you know being a, a young man, um, you know uh, pursuing a major, um, life skills, those things I all learned uh, while here at my institution. And I want to thank um, my mentor, Mr. Lyons, um, Dolores Taylor, who was uh, former um, director of admissions here at. BCU, who also uh, mentored me through the process of uh, providing me my first job here at the institution. 
um, knowing that um, knowing about that that experience and 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 coming through uh, this institution, um, I realized that I wanted to learn more about the the college experience or the student experience. And I've always, when I, even back to my days of, of working in undergraduate admissions, um, knowing that um, I'm very good at uh, recruiting students and bringing students to this institution, but I wanna know more about how they develop, how they grow, what happens to them once they um, leave my presence and matriculate into the university. Um, do, they, do they stay for a year? They, do, they, do they finish? Um, where do they go after um, they leave the institution? Those things were always percolating in my mind, which pushed me to um, go and look for uh, and, and gain my, my master's degree. And now currently I'm, I'm working on my, my doctoral degree in educational leadership. So the curiosity of, of working with students and how they develop at the institution and why uh, college education is, is such a special thing um, has kept me Growing, learning, and um, uh, and, to, to, and to just to be in this space. Um, so I, just, I definitely have to thank um, all my colleagues in academic advising, um, all the faculty and staff that I've that I've encountered throughout my time here at VCU. Um, this is just this, I would like to say this is this award is the icing on the cake, but uh, um, this award to me is a recognition of um, the years of service that I've, I've provided for the university. Um, but more importantly, um, the lives that I've been able to uh, impact and also pay forward as Mr. Lyons has done for me, I've been able to do for uh, students in the sciences, in the College of Humanities and Science and all across the country as well because I've had the opportunity to touch many students across the country as well. Um, and so this award is, is for my students, for the faculty and staff, um, and I really truly appreciate uh, the work that I've been able to do for um, this population here at VCU, and I look forward to doing much more. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, Alvin, for all of your, uh, your hard work for our uh, community. Um, so now I will uh, introduce Dr. James Mays, who will then also recognize the final three faculty award recipients. James. Thank you, Sally. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, once again, I'd like to congratulate all the award winners, um, and also like to thank all of those who are joining us uh, virtually uh, to both support and celebrate um, with our awardees. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Um, I'm pleased to present David Coogan with the College of Humanities and Sciences Distinguished Teaching Award, Humanities and Social Sciences. As professor in the Department of English, David Coogan is described by his nominator as an inspiring teacher and creative force whose passion for teaching and service learning have not only touched the lives of our students but become focal points for his indispensable service to the college and the Richmond community. David, we are proud to recognize your work and commitment to teaching. Join me in applauding David Coogan as the 2019-2020 recipient of the Distinguished Teaching Award, Humanities and Social Sciences. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. I can hear all the applause. I have very good hearing. That's what makes me a good teacher is I listen very carefully. So I know that you're all clapping from wherever you are. Um, I wanted to just open with a story of, of, of happened in a college long, well, far, far away and long, long ago when I was a college student. And I told one of my favorite professors that I wanted to be a teacher. And he told me right away without missing a beat, you're gonna be a great teacher. And I said, well, how do you know? And he said, well, you've had good teachers here, right? And I said, yeah. He said, you've had bad teachers? I said, yeah. He said, well, what makes the good teachers good? And I said, um, because they know what they're talking about. And he said, no, no. Good teachers care about communicating what it is they know. 
and they care how people receive it. You like people, you seem to really wanna connect with people. So you'll find a way of communicating whatever it is you come to know in English and you'll be a good teacher. And I always remembered that because he was such a popular teacher and, and I, I admired him a great deal. I had so many good teachers in college and in graduate school. And I always focused on that. It's always about communicating and caring about developing connections with people. Um, teaching to me is about uh, becoming. It's about honing your voice. Um, it's about the joy of discovering yourself in community with other people. And that's really a process of growing that can only come with trust and vulnerability. I spend a lot of time in my classes uh, developing that so that people can feel safe to, to grow to who they need to become. And I, I especially like doing this at VCU because the more diverse the environment, the better the learning, the more inclusive the environment, the better the outcome. Um, so it's been a pleasure to teach it at VCU. I really, I really do love teaching. And when I told my students um, that I got this award over Zoom, um, I lit up the chat room and I got a lot of nice emojis. So I was pleased with all that. Uh, I told people on Facebook, I got a lot of testimonials from uh, students from, from previous semesters and students from, from years ago. So I was, I was pleased with all that too. Um, it's one of those things where you, know, you, can, you can learn with, without a teacher but you can't teach without students. And so I'm grateful for all of my students, past and present, um, who have allowed me to teach them. So I wanna thank all of them. Um, I also should thank the people who made this possible for me. A big part of what I've done as a teacher over the last 10 years or so at VCU is reach out to find students that don't have access to VCU. And a big part of that has led me to the Richmond City Jail. So um, working with incarcerated uh, writers has been one of the great blessings of my teaching career. And it's been even better blessing upon blessing that I found a way to be able to bring VCU students into that writing circle with me so that everybody can write and grow and share and come to embrace their common humanity. Wherever you've been in life, you're going somewhere. And I believe writing is a way where you can, you can develop that path. You can plot your way to where you wanna go. Um, I can't imagine teaching without being hopeful. Teaching is a hopeful business. It's not only about communicating, but you have to believe. It's non-negotiable. You have to believe people can learn. As soon as you stop believing that, you're no longer teaching, in my view. You're doing something else. So it's a hopeful business, and I'm happy to be in it. Um, I want to thank my colleagues in the English department who have supported me in this journey for many years now and who are themselves quite accomplished teachers. So it's great to have the camaraderie and support of a, of a vibrant department. Um, I would also like to thank um, my, my colleagues in the College of Humanities and Sciences who have supported me in small ways and um, substantial ways and symbolic ways in the journey, especially in the outreach to the incarcerated population of Richmond and justice involved people. Um, and in that same vein, of course, I need to thank um, our leaders in the Division of Community Engagement who have helped um, me make the pathway from VCU into the community uh, as smooth as possible and as rewarding as possible. Thank you all. I heard that too, those claps too. Thank you, David, and congratulations. Well-deserved. Um, Next, I am pleased to present Richard Hammack with the College of Humanities and Sciences Distinguished Teaching Award, Science and Math. As professor in the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics, Richard Hammack received an enthusiastic review by one student who wrote, Hammack taught the best math class ever. I never thought I would like a math class. His nominator goes on to write that his free textbook on mathematical proof writing has been used at as many as 250 universities worldwide, and his work with research students is also far above the norm. In particular, he has written at least 12 research papers with students, as many as the rest of the math faculty combined. 
Richard, congratulations on this much deserved recognition of your dedication. Join me in applauding Richard Hammock as the 2019-2020 recipient of the Distinguished Teaching Award, Science and Math. Thank you, James. I'm thrilled to get this award. It validates the countless hours and hard work I've put into teaching over the years. I'm honored, but I'm also very lucky because there are so many talented teachers in the math department who are equally deserving. So thanks to my department for nominating me and thanks to the College of Humanities and Sciences, but especially thanks to my students. No teacher can be successful without receptive and willing students, and I've found an abundance of them here at BCU. I'm very lucky to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Congratulations again. Thank you. Now I'm pleased to present Andrew Eckert with the College of Humanities and Sciences Excellence in Scholarship Award, Science and Math. As Associate Professor in the Department of Biology, Andrew Eckert was described by his nominator with the following. Andrew is an internationally recognized leader in the field of forest genetics. His work spans the fields of evolution, population genetics, and forest ecology, with implications for the application of emerging quantitative and molecular technologies in understanding genome level variation in species of forest trees, especially the genetics of adaptation to changing environments. Andrew, congratulations on this recognition of your important research and scholarship. Join me in applauding Andrew Eckert as the 2019-2020 recipient of the Excellence in Scholarship Award, Science and Math. All right, I think, I think I've unmuted myself correctly. Can everyone hear me? Yes? Yes, we can. All right. Well, I want to thank uh, the college, my department, and the nominating committee in my department for uh, this award. Um, it's this award is really about my students, postdocs, both undergrads and graduate students, by the way, uh, postdocs, and the wonderful work uh, that they have done with me in collaboration. Uh, it, it's a testament to the uh, research atmosphere in my department. So thank you for the admin for creating such a, uh, an atmosphere. And most importantly, it's, it's important to recognize my wonderful family that has always supported time spent doing research and running around in the woods, collecting samples for research. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, again, I wanna say congratulations to all of our award winners. Uh, and now um, I want to invite Dean Mallet uh, to now take over and continue with our ceremony. All right. Well, I won't be taking over for long. Um, that was the conclusion of our presentation of the honorees. I want to echo what my colleagues have said about what a pleasure and inspiration it is to hear about all of the good work that's being done in the college. And I think for me as a new member of the college, it was an especially big treat. Um, you know, I'm meeting everyone virtually right now and getting to know the college remotely. And so um, maybe we can say that a silver lining of, of the not being able to do this in the spring was that I got the pleasure of getting to know so many great people in the college in the college through this event. So um, yes, yeah, so thank you for the work that you do. It really, it's wonderful. And I can see um, why there's so much pride in the college and you know, it's, it's wonderful. So, um, and thank you for everyone who attended. We really, I don't know if everyone can see, but we had over a hundred people come to this event, which I think is really great. And also a testimony to the support for the um, honorees and um, you know, how much 
people care about the college and want to support one another. So thank you everyone. Congratulations again to the honorees and I look forward to continuing to work with you all. Take care.